listen, uh, we are, you know, changing the format of the show a little bit, and we're going down a little bit more of an artistic uh, realm. Right now, we uh, are kind of uh, extending our branches out into the music scene, the music world. Uh, Corey and I consider ourselves both artists when it comes to being on a camera, but we wanted to get a different perspective, and we wanted to get a music perspective. And so we have Peter DiStefano. Uh, on the show from Point of Pyros, uh, I can go on about the bands that you've been in. On that note, how are you and how is it uh, being under quarantine as a musician uh, currently? Well, I, I feel, uh, you know, um, I'm grateful that I'm healthy and I'm grateful that my wife and kids are healthy. And uh, I shaved my head. I had to shave it myself because um, I couldn't go out and get a haircut. And I've been doing these 15-second tunes on, on Instagram, and it goes from Instagram to Facebook. So I'm doing these, you know, you get 15 seconds of story. So I've been doing these 15-second songs and posting them. So I've posted four of them. I've written two songs and made videos of them and posted one's called Virus, and the other one is called I Don't Care. And, uh, and I Don't Care was written... Um, because people are going like, did you know the virus started this? Did you know the Democrats did this? Did you know the Republicans did this? Did you know this? Did you know that? That do you, uh, No one I know has got the virus. Do you know that? It was just like, I don't care. Leave me alone. You know, don't get me involved in your misery. So I'm just a guitar player, blue collar guitar player. I want to make a living and I just want to keep it simple. And, and if I have something to say, I'll say it in a song. You know, I'm looking for inspiration and just constantly seeking it. So that's why I'm kind of curious, you know, what has you going? Well, I, I uh, the main thing is, is it's so um, crazy what's happening that I'm definitely not bored, you know, um, from the news briefings to everything that's going on to, you know, making sure my kids um, do their homeschooling, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, being, being said, I had, I had a music residency that I was doing on Wednesday nights in a classic Santa Monica bar called Harvell's. And, you know, that was taken from me and, and, you know, doing live, live gigs and live sessions with musicians is taken from me. So I, uh, you know, I get to work on, on my solo stuff, which is cool. But, um, yeah, the negative stuff is, is, you know, the fear of people that I love dying. Um, and, uh, the getting to not play live and be out with people and hanging out with my big Italian family. And so, what I get in, what I use for inspiration is I just take that sadness, that feeling, that pain. Um, when it first happened, I couldn't even, I didn't even want to do anything. I, I declined interviews. I declined, uh, you know, online gigs, like, you know, zoom gigs and stuff like that. I was just like, I don't want to take this moment to make a hustle with it and turn it into some way to get my art out right now. I just need to be left alone and, feel the pain to the morning of this you know but i'm over that now and i'm having fun so i feel like with the news and what's going on there is a disconnect there is a lack of humanity you hear it from every different side from social media to the news where i think with this kind of platform we're we're, we're reaching out we're, we're bridging the gap and that's the one thing is that i think whatever industry you're in there's still the opportunity to be creative there's still that opportunity to get things out it can be cathartic it can be um, you know, just, just inspirational, you know, when whatever's bad, there could be good around the corner. So that's why, you know, I, I've been kind of changing up as the, 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 the norm that I do, you know, I'd love to get out. I love to work and interact with people. I'd love to be in a studio or in the field, but you know, got to make the do with, with, with what I have as far as, you know, my, my equipment and my instruments. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking in the background, you got a, a nice array of guitars back there. Do you have like a home studio set up? This is my personal room in a studio called Revolver Recordings. And uh, it's, uh, 
about 15 minutes away from my house. Has it been a slow process getting back uh, into the things I guess staying sharp, you know, creatively with music, uh, getting back in the studio? It's been, uh, I mean, I, I'm having fun with, uh, with uh, things, you know, and then I get sad and then I get scared and just like everybody else, you know. Um, yeah. But um, it's not cool to see bodies in New York, you know, being stacked up in on the sidewalk and stuff. And that's crazy, you know. It's it's crazy. A pandemic happened. I, I just that was something that you saw in movies and stuff. I never thought it would really happen. And the saddest part of everything is is that my kids, in their youth, my son doesn't. You know, he just turned fifteen, and he. He doesn't get to hang out with girls and be with his friends and go to school. And it's almost, it's, it's a weird thing to say, but it's like our almost art imitates life, you know? And yeah. I, I, I kind of find it a little disturbing. You know, you can go to a movie that came out three years ago and it's playing out in real life now, you know? And it's like, it's a, it's a mind fuck. I hate to say it like that, but it, it really is. Cause it is tragic. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm on the East coast. I'm right next to New York. You're out in California, and, and I think you mentioned the Santa Monica area. You know, it's it's pretty impactful. I mean, it's something that you just can't downplay. So uh, it's, you know, it's always interesting to hear how you're getting through it with your family and whatnot. You know, I know you mentioned the the haircut. Trust me, I've I've got a botched job. That seems to be the theme every time we come on. My I got a little three year old that likes to just uh, you know experiment with my hair. But if that's something that keeps him going and keeps his mind occupied and the family, you know, lives on another day, healthy and somewhat mentally stable. Keep on cutting that hair, you know, keep on making me look like a, a weirdo, but. <laughs> great. No, you look good. Yeah, I, I try. I try, you know. Yeah, that's I, I don't care. You know? well, that's I'm, going, I'm going the other route. I'm growing my hair super long for this. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so. oh, well, that's. That, that's the thing is, you know, I was kind of going for this, I don't know, Mad Max kind of thing, you know, it was kind of getting almost this anarchy, you know, I, I, at one point, you know, I was looking to get back into Manhattan and to work and they were kind of like, no, so I thought I was kind of going to go for that snake, you know, escaping, you know, to New York kind of look, so I'm like, what's going to happen? I don't know, you know, and that's the thing is, it's it, it got a little weird out here, you know, it, it definitely got weird and it's definitely something that, you know, I, I can't turn on the news in front of my kids nowadays because it's something that, you know, my three-year-old knows and says the word coronavirus and pandemic and death. And now I can explain to a three-year-old and a five-year-old what death is really about and, you know, why we can't go see our relatives and, you know, yeah. why this friend ain't calling because this friend that I know isn't around anymore because, you know, the, the virus, they passed on. So it's, it's, it's a little, you know, every day is a, it's a new challenge, but, uh, yeah. But on that note, I want to I want to segue into talking to you about your music and, you know, in this day and age, it's it's quite interesting that we have social media and uh, Corey and I just give a little background. We both started off as photographers, transitioned to doing more roles with with video and television. I guess you know I could say my myself. We're our titles are cinematographers, you know, in the sports realm. With social media. You know, it's, it's, it's almost instant access, getting your content out there, advertising. What do you, what's your take on music and social media? And, you know, what are, what are your views? Is it a blessing, a curse? Well, I, How do you deal with it? Well, for me, I, I, uh, I've had um, Twitter accounts that, so we, in, in, the professional world of music, there's there's PR people and there's uh, PR and marketing people, and they get paid to 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 do that. And um, so when I got, I was doing um, fan sites before Facebook came out and um, Instagram and all that stuff. And I uh, I've had a couple of Instagram accounts that I deleted. I had a Twitter account that I deleted. I made five different Facebooks and stuff like that. Only because um, uh, my band, Lance Herbstrom, we had a PR person. And I was like, oh, I'm tweeting. I got 60,000 followers. I got this. And I, and I found out that it was all fake. It was all being bought. It was all, you can pay per post per, 
you can buy, you can have pay for comments and likes. And then I found out that everything was fake and people are like fish and they follow. It's like a school of fish going to the left or right. When they see the masses go this way, they go that way. And so, um, and I, and I watched, um, an artist that her father, you know, uh, but before Facebook, there was MySpace, and he spent like I don't know a couple of thousand on making it number one and the most liked it, and it blew up and it careers. And I was just watching that. And then I heard that Hendrix, they had to fake that Hey Joe was a hit, and then it made all the people then like Hendrix, and then he got in and stuff like that. So when I found out that that was being done with my stuff, I kept deleting, I kept sabotaging myself to get to what is real hot, you know, I'm a blue collar musician. I'm not a rock star, you know, and, and, and that's, uh, so I've been doing, you know, so I have like a tattoo page on Facebook. I have different live stream pages. I have, you know, then there was a fan page, but it's ran by a fan. I don't control it. And there's, you know, my Instagram is small. So I just want to know the truth, you know, um, because I don't care. I mean, I, what I did with Porno for Paros and my movie legacy is gigantic. You know, I've, I've been able to touch billions of people with my guitar through movies and TV shows and video games. And, you know, video game awards were 30 million live stream viewers. Uh, when we did, uh, you know, I did all the, the biggest video game songs at the video game awards. And so it's, it's you know, I don't feel like I need to, to go and look here's the instagram numbers and look here's the facebook numbers or here's the twitter numbers that is being bought for and paid for anyway so um that's been my experience i don't post my children my children are worth more to me than my money or my art so i have no pictures of my children i posted one family shot of us and then a shot of my wife but we're in an open relationship um you know, modern family and so uh, I don't like to go into personal stuff, tragedies with family, good things with family and stuff. I'll talk about my music. Social media is just for my music and my personal life as an artist. Um, but my personal family and stuff like that, I don't talk about that or bring it up or show it off, especially my kids. Do you so then it kind of sounds like you feel that social media has the tendency to kind of corrupt the art? Is is that what I'm kind of hearing from you? Is that it corrupts me because I, my colleagues, and I, you know, I'm 55, 54, 55 July 10th. I want to be 55. I want to have the teeth yellow. I, I want, I don't dye my hair or my beard. I want, I don't want to be 45. I don't want to be 35. I don't want to be 25. I did that already. You know, I want to show people, I want to, to show off my miles. I don't want to go, Hey, look, this guy's been through nothing. I've been through the fucking ringer, man. You know? And so I want to show that I, I want to show the seasons. I believe that life has four seasons. There's, you know, life expectancy is 78 years, 78.5 years. If you Google it, and so if you round it up to 80 and you bring it into four seasons, your spring is from when you're born to 20, 20 to 40 is your summer years. The, the one that everyone covets and, and they do plastics, you know, Hollywood's addicted to that. And then your, your fall is from 40 to 60. So I'm three quarters through my fall, you know, where you're salt and pepper and get brown and gray and, and then, you know, like the leaves are changing. And then 60 up is your winter wonderland. And all four seasons are sexy and beautiful. And we should, we should enjoy them all. I don't, I don't want to pretend that I look like I'm in my summer. You know, I, I want to be in my fall, you know. So uh, I, I guess uh, social media is great because it's recording the seasons as I change. And that, that's great, too. So I'm getting to document the, the changes. And it's cool. So 
Go. No, I mean, it's, it's interesting you say that because I, I, I mean, I, that's a different perspective. I guess I'm in my early fall season now, but I, I, I feel that kind of playing the game with social media in order to advertise, kind of making a living on your own, you have to play that game. You know, trying to create, you know, as a storyteller and be creative content for that short window, the messages aren't getting across. That's, it's, it's, you know, all for what? If I can't deliver a message or convey emotion or certain things like that, then what's the point? You know, and I feel like, you know, that's what like certain platforms like, so, like Instagram, I, it's just instant, quick bullshit gratification. And that's what I, I've kind of come to where I'm like, I feel like it's, it teeters on, you know, a lot of bullshit. And I just got to personally, as a creative artist, walk that line. So that's why I'm kind of curious of how do you walk that line? I mean, you kind of, you kind of mentioned it. So well, I mean, the, the most talented people, I guess, in film, in the film world would be Harry Gregson Williams, and I, I get to play on all his films, and like Hans Zimmer, and, and then, you know, I, I'm going after the talent. I, I, I'm a talent whore, you know? Um, and so I, uh, that's what's important to me, and, and an expression of what you are. So I, I feel like... Uh, you know, um, if I wanted to, I could start an Instagram, you know, just race everything that I have, restart an Instagram, hire a PR person. And, well, I can do it myself. You download apps and it's called buy likes, buy comments, buy, uh, you know, and I could dye my hair, recreate myself and make myself look younger and, and, you know, think about making music that, you know, and, and try to find a, 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 a young hip person that I could attach myself to and make, uh, and then just buy comments, likes, and followers, and then have people go, whoa, he's huge, you know, for you. I think you could buy, uh, I don't know, we could Google it, but maybe one of you guys can Google it while I'm talking to tell me what it is, but it's like, for 100 bucks, you can get 10,000 likes, you know, and 500 yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that you can pay in. for everything and you can be Instagram famous overnight. And that's, that's what I, 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 I hate that hang up is that you can create this, this illusion, this culture, this lifestyle, you know, if you got money, pay to play. And it's just, uh, to me, it's just pointless. It's not that much money. It's not, you, you know, people will, you know, if you, if you put in 500 a month, or a thousand, if you put in a thousand a month, like your mortgage or, 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 or your car payment or whatever, you know, if you put in a thousand into your career, into paying for likes, comments, and then people will see, they'll go, oh my God, look at it. And they'll start, then you'll start getting real followers and then it grows and it explodes, but you gotta have, you know, something catchy and all that. I just don't go there. I'm, I'm, I like gunslingers, criminals biker gang guys i like being bad i got into music to be bad and real and to have sex and do drugs and not have to work and party 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 i'm sober 22 years but i still party you know um in a different way i can do everything else but i just can't do the drugs or drink anymore because i'm a stage four alcoholic drug addict so um, but you know, the, I'm doing this because it's fun and, and I can get into vanity, vanity, money and fame are the three killers of music. And I've watched people that made the heaviest music in the world. Their music just turned to garbage. It's polished, overproduced crap, in my opinion. And I'll never say who it is or whatever, but I just see it all over the place. I don't want that. I'd rather be, I'd rather have three fans that go fucking that's heavy. I get it. You're real, dude. Than to have a hundred thousand fans that are just going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then jump on the next circus that comes in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no loyalty. There's no, there's no, you know, I got people all over the world that have this tattoo, you know, and it's like, <laughs> like a gang, you know, and it's called the, uh, Peter DiStefano Tattoo Club on Facebook, and it's a group page. And I love group pages because you can't buy fans, you can't buy likes, you can't buy followers, you can't buy it. 
they have to be invited to come in and there's a couple of thousand people there and there's people all over the world that have this tattoo i i actually have a friend from high school i'll say his name mark bixman who was yeah. the first one to get it and he's just like oh. dude I, I got this and 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 that's where i i gonna segue is that you know I started hearing about your music and following you, I think, 93, 94. And still to this day, I'm still intrigued by your sound and what you represent. And then I was explaining to Corey, you're California to me. Every time I step foot in California, your guitar sound, that Santa Monica, Venice Beach, that, that whole area vibe, the, the guns, the rock and roll, the bikers, the, the badass imagery. I, it's just to me that's your guitar sound that's that's, that's your sound and that's where you. i and i i just i to me it's it's not dated it's it's not a dated sound and every time i've heard that distinction whether it's a film score or a video game or just a, a, a project that you've been it's like it just represents the area you know how do you get inspiration you know, on I know, and I I know we've. I'm going to try to make this other segue is that you know you're an avid motorcyclist. Uh, I don't know if I would say motorcycle enthusiast, but is it something where you just get on the bike and just travel and just absorb? Because I, I was telling Corey, you know, not too long ago, you know, I gotta got that vibe of like LA gangs and this and that and, and the Latin community, not from like bands like NWA, you know, but from your guitar sound, your band's interaction, how, how do you absorb this like a sponge and, and uh, just, you know, translate into your guitar? Well, it, it, Leonard Skinner's a good example. There, uh, when you hear Leonard Skinner's music, the OG band. Yeah, you just made Corey happy. You just made Corey. Yeah, Corey, Corey's happy. He's a big Leonard Skinner yeah. fan, so good well, stuff. Well, Skinner, Skinner was a huge, huge influence on me, the way they lived their life. They drank whiskey, they got in bar fights, and they fucked girls, they don't even know their names. They they crash in car, you know, they they lived and that's what you hear the sound, you go, fuck. There's badass gun slinging dudes from the south. And so I I just like I'm gonna fucking live it. I'm gonna live like an outlaw and then play. And that's how I still live. This is kind of the segue. And, and, and to me, like I said, I, I kind of was aware of your, your music and your talents, but I think back in like 93, 94, how did everything come together with Porno for Pyros? I, 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 I say this, the band never broke up. They're, technically, everybody's still on board. Am I correct by yeah. saying that? You know, and how did, <laughs> just, how, did, how did it all come about? I grew up with Eric Avery, the original bass player for Jane's Addiction. And we went to Santa Monica High School together. We were in a band together called Misty Faith, a garage band. We never played live. It was me, Eric Avery, and this guy, Sean Sullivan. And then he moved to that house on, uh, I think it was uh, St. Andrews with uh, Perry. And, and they started a band together and called it Jane's Addiction. And then they made it on the cover of uh, LA Weekly. And I was like, fuck, he made it, you know? And I went and saw him play. And, and I was hanging out with him. And then, uh, then some weird stuff happened. And, and we just sort of took a break for a minute. And then I went on a surf trip with Bronze Age. There was this clothing company and they and i was friends with perry's roommate at the time greg lampkin who i met through eric avery and we were surfing and he's like you know i was like if if, if perry comes with us we can all go on a surf trip and perry was like i'll do it and so we all went on a surf trip and then we were sharing a cabana together me and in port it was in puerto escondido mexico it was me perry farrell and this guy greg lampkin and we had a Cabana together, and I had a little acoustic, and I was doing finger picking things. And he was like, "Wow, that's great!" And he was, you know, "I'm going to start a new a new thing, and uh, you should come and jam when I get back." And so we, after the surf trip, we came back, and I went to the audition, and there was a bunch of people ripping, and, and I was just hitting one note every now and then because everyone was playing as fast as they could. Then I packed up, like, "I don't want to do this." And then 
him and Casey came to my house and they were like, why, why aren't you into it? And I was like, I, would, I just want to play your second stage at Lollapalooza with my brother. And then he's, he's like, okay. And then we went to this guy, Skate Master Tate's house. And we were partying. I was hanging out with him and Casey. And then Skate Master Tate was a DJ and, and he was DJing uh, Riders on the Storm from uh, The Doors. And then I pulled out my guitar and started playing the bow over it. We wrote Orgasm over that song, the song Orgasm on the first record. And then we wrote, we, I just started writing, then we wrote Miha, and then we wrote um, Cursed Female. Those three songs in one night over three other songs. And then we recorded them, and then Perry got all excited and sent it to Warner Brothers, and they said, you can't play entire songs over entire songs. And so we had to just use samples and then it got, you know, because nobody was doing that mashups, you know? And so, and I finally did it with my band, Lance Armstrong in 2010, where we do entire songs over entire songs and then write songs over it. But I was, so then when, when I saw that there was something different than Jane's Addiction, because it's like, I don't want to, Jane's Addiction is like the heaviest rock band in the world. You guys are amazing, completely creative. I don't want everyone, I don't want to get into something and then be judged and everyone hate me and that, you know? And so, but when there was a DJ, I go, it's different. It's a rock band with somebody spinning, you know, it's a, a element over it. And hip hop had just started, you know? And, uh, well, I mean, you know, the, the whole uh, sampling and singing over it was, was, was uh, you know, it was a fresh idea. It wasn't like a, you know, 20 year, old thing um and so that made me excited we're going to be mixing hip-hop with rock you know and uh and so uh that then it went to that and then we did our albums toured the world and i became a really really bad heroin addict and so i was finally we were going to do this big jane's addiction portal for pyros together because i was playing with dave and flea and we did the Howard Stern stuff. And then I got cancer and I, I was dying from heroin and cancer. And I was like, I, I got to save my life. And so they continued as Jane's Addiction relapsed or like a re reunion of Jane's Addiction with Flea and Dave. And it was going to be called Jane's Addiction and Porn for Paros. And it was going to be announced, but I could, you know, I had to save my life. So then they just went as Jane's Addiction. And, uh, and I, you know, I went through my eighth and final rehab. I, uh, I was blessed to get through the cancer and get sober. And then I went into the film world and then they continued doing, doing that. And then, you know, 10 years later, I started with Lance Armstrong, two DJs and a guitar player and did that for 10 years. And now we're here, you know, so it, it, years. it's, so it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I hate to say it, it sounds like the way I'm, you're just kind of like nonchalantly, you're just talking about, you know, your, 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 your health issues and whatnot, but that's a lot of time and you've overcome a lot of obstacles. I mean, do you attribute that to music? Do you attribute that to family and friends being close by or a combination of both? If I'm setting up a baby pool in the backyard to fill up with water and, and, to sit in because I'm quarantined and I can't go to the public pool in the condo that I live in, you know? And, and so I, uh, my house has, is like a detached condo living at their houses, but we, we shared pools, you know, common pool and stuff. And, and that's close because of the coronavirus. So I went and bought a kiddie pool at target and I sit out there with my dogs and I'm making the best of it. And I'm making, I put everything I am into that. You know, and if I'm making a bed, I put everything I'm, I am into making that. And if I'm playing music, I put everything I am into that, you know. If I'm making love, I put everything I am into that. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I'm the most honest when I pick up a guitar. Yeah. There's something that happens to me where I disengage and the, the truth comes out. It's inspiring to hear. That's the whole point of this this show. There's there's a couple you know objectives that I want to and again it's to be cathartic and it's to be on a human level and, and to hear inspiring things. You know, life is full of tragedies and sometimes you got to make the best out of it. And 
those make the people you know better, more bulletproof. And that's a, it's it's inspiring to hear your story, and it's 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 inspiring to hear you go from bands and different genres and different you know kind of industries. I mean, to leapfrog you know from your story about Pornhub Pyros into the, the film industry. I mean, how 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 did you segue into film scores? They did the Jane's Addiction Relapse tour, and I went to go save my life. I knocked on Hans Zimmer's door in Santa Monica and with a guitar synthesizer and this guy, Harry Gregson Williams, opened the door. And I said, hey, I'm here to see Hans. My name is Peter. I was a band called Porno for Paros. I, I have a guitar synthesizer. I want to try to do sessions for films. And so he took me in because his wife at the time, Karen, uh, was a big fan of Porn for Power. So he, he came in and da, 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 and we ended up making an album together called Rambian. And then he's had me as his session guitar player for 20 years. Working on film scores, working, do you get brought in on an earlier, I mean, uh, kind of walk me through the process. Do you get brought in early with a film director to get some type of inspiration or do you get a script? How, how does that come about with the film score? Or do you just see the imagery and just start immediately tracking, you know, how, how, do, how does the process work working, you know, in a band to going into film score? I have done a lot of content for independent companies and independent films and films that did did okay and surf films and stuff like that as a composer. But the big boys, like right now I'm uh, I'm gonna be playing guitar for a movie called uh, Infinite. It's with Mark Mark Wahlberg uh, is starring in it. And then at the same time, Ridley Scott, Tony's brother, is doing a movie called the final duel and it's got Matt Damon and uh, Ben Affleck in it and uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon wrote the uh, screenplay and uh, and Ridley Scott's incredible so I'm going to be playing guitar on that and then there's uh, um, a documentary on uh, the fires in California I'm going to be playing guitar for that all through Harry Griggs and Williams and um and uh, then I'm doing my own, as a composer, to a, a short series um, TV um, show. They're, they're short episodes. Um, that's going to be pitched. Um, and I've brought my friend Delaney Harder. She's a violin player, soloist, composer. And we're co-scoring it together so that's fun and uh and and also i have you know there's so many things i'm doing and i'm uh i have a uh a movie a documentary kind of uh movie called american art uh american uh oh my god i can't even think about it uh modern american artists sorry made by all edge entertainment and uh, we won all these awards. We won the Hollywood Film Festival, the Orlando Film Festival. We went to Arizona Film Festival. We just, we, you know, all this great stuff. And so we got asked to do uh, another one. And, you know, so, so, and then I also, there's the Wee Bros. We're going to be doing uh, music, a music company. And then, you know, this thing here at Revolver with Michael Blue. And then I have uh, um, All Edge Music with Malay and Doug. And then there's uh, uh, a thing called Apollo 3 Presents. And it's me and this guy, Brett and Heath. And we're going to be uh, producing artists as part of this film, this TV show. Then I got a thing called D&G Entertainment with Mark Gann and we have, you know, studio together and, and Apollo three have a studio together. And so there, there, there's so much that I'm involved in, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, um, I used to kill the pain with heroin, you know, a needle and a spoon for the downtime. It was it, the downtime is just what kills me when you're on stage and you're playing and the crowd and then going to the bus and then, then you're now your bus. Now what? Then you do heroin, you know? And so it, heroin was just to get through 
no action. I just need action constantly, you know? So, uh, so I make action for myself. So I have a huge IMDB. I have, you know, 10 solo records that I did from 2000 to 2010, you know, uh, it's over a hundred songs. Uh, I have, you know, so I'm constantly, and there's so much more content that I've done that that's underground and on shelves and stuff. And so many, I mean, I made probably six, at least six albums to eight albums, full albums with my friend, John Rickle. And he's really talented and stuff. And that's sitting on a hard drive. It's just it's frustrating, you know? Um, it doesn't, it, I mean, in, in, a, in a way though, it doesn't sound like you have an issue being creative because it seems like creativity is like a light switch. Like it's on for you. It's constantly on for you. And you just kind of said this, this, you know, big, uh, long, elaborate, you know, you constantly have music, you're constantly creating, you know, do you feel that, that like, you know, what I'm saying is correct, you know, when it comes to you, do you have that constant on switch when it comes to creative or no, not all the time. There, there's, <laughs> there, there are times where it just ooh, it shuts down. All right. See, so. see, this is what I wanted, Corey. I got, I got what I wanted. Here we go. He's picked up a guitar. I wasn't going to ask him, but he's picking oh, up no, the guitar. Okay. okay. So there's the key. So E. Okay. So you know you can do. Okay. That's like a blues. Also a Chinese. And then that's a scale. So you know. Okay, well, I can do that. And then, you know, then there's the kind of, which is still pentatonic, but in a different key. Then there's Middle Eastern. And then there's a uh, whole tone. And then there's uh, diminished, which is now the so last thing I want to do is talk over you, but go ahead. So there's vocabulary. So there's all this vocabulary. Most people that rock, they go that vocabulary, which is unbelievably boring and and uh, so with portable for Piles, we change keys and i use different skills so I'm, I'm really into vocabulary so i love jazz and i love classical i like all music and so create creatively there's there's those scales that work with stuff and diminished in whole tone you used to be put to death if you use tritones like you know you couldn't you couldn't uh use uh certain scales and stuff like that diminished you it, it was the church would put you to death you know now we can do whatever we want then there's wrong notes so for for every so e so this is e major there's seven notes so that's an octave so those those are the right notes right so there's always seven right notes and five bad notes and what we do with hell ride which is Mike Watt, Steve Perkins, and I, is we'll do like starting on a Suja song, and then I get to open up and use all 12 notes. And, uh, and I like to use 12 notes and the microtones in between it. So I use all, because life is everything. You know, it's not perfect harmony. You fall downstairs, you, you get beat up, you, you know, you get in car accidents, stuff happens. And, yeah. and, and you have hard times and you get sick and, you're not feeling well, you're bent, you know? And so I like to do that with music too and to play. So creatively would be not having a conclusion, not thinking about the scales, not having anywhere to go and just going. Okay, so if I go.
So that was awesome. creative. Have you I mean, cultivated your sound because of traveling and experiencing different cultures? I don't know, different religions going out on tour. Is that how you were able to absorb those unique sounds and transpire? Because again, starting off with the blues and everything. Yeah, I get it. That's a United States thing. But those different sounds and distinctions, is that from touring? Is that from just opening your mind on tour and going overseas and experiencing different things and just, again, translating that into your guitar? Tone is an incredible thing. Uh, you know, hearing Eddie Van Halen's tone, I just lost it. Jimmy Page with all the tone changes that he did. And, and, uh, and then Hendrix just with the feedback and the, the tone, you know, the tone from that. And then, and then hearing electronic music and then horns and stuff and, and just trying to, to look at the guitar as a sound device. And, and, you know, uh, so it's, it, it's everything. It's everything. It's thinking about the gear, the amps, the tubes, the pedals, the string gauges, the picks, the scales, the vocabulary, the the lifestyle. The um, but the most important thing is honesty. You know, like when I when I play, like here, you know. You know, I, I disengage and this thing happens to where I'm, you know. There's a, uh, it's just, a, it, it's throwing up my soul, if that yeah. makes sense. No, it makes total oh, sense. Perfect it, sense, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want to take credit for this, Corey. I, maybe I will. Uh, got you turned on to Lance Herbstrong. That Lance Herbstrong stuff is just, it's mind-blowing. I love it. Oh, that means yeah. the world to me. I mean, I, I spent 10 years not writing a song, you know. I'm from prolific songwriter to just from 2010 to 2019 not writing a song, you know, just taking songs. Right. Like thinking, like, you know, Led Zeppelin. And then taking, uh, you know, that's a whole lot of love riff, Jimmy Pages, and then taking Ozzy Osbourne's War Pigs, you know, and go. Generals gathered in their masses, just like witches in black masses. Evil minds and thought destruction. You know, and 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 take realizing that they work together. You know, yeah, uh, and putting two songs together. So taking the actual whole song and the whole song, and with with uh, Bill Sarver's an incredible uh, producer, and, and using Ableton to 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 make them match and in tune and with the the beats per minute and mashing them on top of it and then me writing melodies over and playing over it and stuff and so and then also you know like pretty lights a dj and then knowing that you know there must be some kind of way out of here taking Jimi hendrix's version of that and putting it over pretty lights and you know just by hearing things and being creative and and so it was very creative, but it was basically, you know, there was thievery corporation. I go, I want to be the biggest thieves of all and steal entire songs on top of entire songs and write over them and release them and get paid for it. <laughs> and nobody <laughs> this. I mean, we did it with Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd. We did it with Billy Squire. We've done it with Hendrix. We've done it with uh, Queen. We've done, I mean, you can just go to, go to Spotify go, and look, and it's the biggest rock and roll hits in the world. And, and Sharon Osbourne let us release it. And everybody, they're just like, Pete's just a bad boy criminal. Just let him steal, you know? Well, let me ask you this. I mean, to kind of 
segue back into other art forms and music. Um, is there anything, I mean, you, you, you named a lot of heavy hitter, you know, guitarists and musical acts from the 60s, 70s and 80s. Is there anything that film wise that, that has inspired you? Uh, and, and, you know, did you seek out inspiration? And I'm going to go back because I'm a big Ridley Scott and Tony Scott fan. Is there anything that, that you know, maybe their films and interacting with, with them and working with them that's inspired you? You know, because that's a, I, as far as you know, doing what I do, I seek music. I seek music and films to inspire me or what I do daily, more music than, than films. What do you, do you have anything as far as inspiration, as far as directors and films and working with certain directors? The directors that I've worked on on my there was Peter Iliff and he wrote Patriot games and both the point Brank movies and stuff. And he, I composed for him. I've composed for uh, surf films. I did all the, all the music for all the all edge entertainment films and TV shows. I've done stuff like that. But when you're talking about Ridley Scott or Tony Scott, that was Harry Gregson Williams was the composer. He had the relationship with them. I met Tony a couple times and he would say, I need more Jimmy in this part. And I was called Jimmy. You know, that's what he <laughs> called my name, Jimmy. Yeah. I think he was met like Jimmy Hendrix or Jimmy bitch. I don't know, but he would just go, we need more Jimmy H, you know, and he would, so the relationship was with Harry. Harry's the one who has relationships with all that. I'm his guitar player. I'm a blue collar guitar player for Harry Craig and Williams on those big films, on the biggest films, yeah. you know, like all the Shrek films, man on fire, spy game, uh, both the Equalizer movies, uh, you know, uh, Unstoppable, uh, you know, Phone Booth, like some heavy movies, and then a lot of the kids' films and Lion Witch and Wardrobe and and uh, you know Mulan that we just did Mulan, and that's not uh, the pandemic pushed it back, so yeah. you know. So, but I just keep going. I'm 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 not I'm I'm trying to make it leave a huge legacy behind. That's that's my intention. Not, you know, how big am I on Instagram or or how or celebrity? I, I want art. I want as much art out there. And uh, my IMDb shows that you know, my, if I can get a squeak, if I can get, if I can just get a, you know, in a movie, then I'm touching and then there's a scene, and it's and I'm just doing that one little thing over an orchestra or something. I call it squeaks. Like, you know, if I can get a squeak in a, in a movie and I get a paycheck and I get secondary markets fund money. And so I'm grateful. I'm a happy camper. And I was part of that, you know, $300 million film that, you know, the Meg, you know, that was number one. And then Equalizer 2 was number one last year. So I got to be the guitar player on two number one films last year, or maybe it was 2018. And then 2019, we were supposed to have Mulan. I don't know, but whatever those dates are. But those are the last two. And then I did Whiskey Cavalier, a TV show that didn't get picked up. But um, I was busy doing that. And then video games. I played on uh, some great video games that, that have won awards and songs that have won awards for video games. And, and you know, got to play out in the Call of Duty video games and and uh i mean that's the thing is you know I, I there are certain things that i'm aware that you contributed and some that I, I i wasn't aware of say for example with shrek all of a sudden i'm like that's your sound that's peter's sound you know and i'm and i'm listening know, and, 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 and the thing that's is that's record that's shrek yeah yeah that's 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 awesome see that's the thing is that that's a shrek album okay no, I'll, 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 let me let yeah me. no we, we can see I'll, it it's good Oh, is it, can you see it? Up yeah, there? We, yeah, yeah, we, we see it. Donkey and Shrek, and yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, good. All right, good. <laughs> but, but, but the <laughs> thing is, you know, my, awesome. my key thing is, you know, with, with your sound, is there a certain someone that you like to play with? Stephen Perkins, you know, has played drums with you quite quite a lot. Uh, is that something that you know right away you click and you just want to work with them on all projects? Or is oh, there, I love. Is there Steve. there's certain art, artists that you just you you have to play with i'm open to whatever you know every day is a new day and i'm happiest playing alone yeah um i'm happiest djing uh with a laptop i'm a whore the world's worst dj but i like it and so it doesn't matter i i spin you know a record and then 
hit the thing and then the looper thing, you know, do all this stuff on the, the computer. It's fun. But I like producing dope tracks to, to, to play over and stuff. And, and, uh, but I have fun, you know, and, and I like to sing and I like to play guitar. I like to, I like it all, you know. And so I, I, right now, the last couple of years, I like playing alone um, because you're as good as your weakest member. And, and not to say that I'm not weak, but, but a lot of people my age or, or my era or whatever, they, they've, in my opinion, they've lost. They put vanity first, money and fame before the art. And if I just completely let go of that and I just want to make great art. When, when I play the guitar, I, I want to have, it doesn't matter if it's a cover. It doesn't matter if it's, um, you know, something you write, like, you know. <laughs> wrote that i don't you know yeah. it was beautiful it was real it was honest you know everybody can say that sucked they this and, 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 and it, it, it just doesn't matter there it is <laughs> yeah, and, and i think some of the hang-ups that i face and i'm not speaking on chorus behalf and maybe you could you could pitch into is that you know i i like to think sometimes some of the creative process i i do it for others you know, I do it. I, I want to see that reaction I do for others. And, and I kind of stop now to say, no, I, I have to do it for me, for, for my gratification. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to win over people. I just need to just get that creativity from my head to, you know, whatever device I'm using out. Is that kind of what, you know, you're, you're kind of the hitting at? Is that something you, 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 you create for you? I used to create for the masses and for the fame and the rock star and the girls and the money and to get famous and to get famous and to get famous and to look sexy and all that. As a kid, that's something I did, you know, with porno for part, you know, growing it up. And now it's for the mojo or the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, being honest and real, letting that come through and I guess you can call it God. I'm playing for, for God. You know, the, the, all I care about is the respect from the mojo, from the Holy Spirit. I want the power. I don't want to be cheesy. I don't want to make shitty art. Every time I pick up this instrument, I think it's dope what, what comes out of it because it's the Holy Spirit. It's not me. But if I start thinking about vanity and how I look and should I do this, should I turn the, you know, the shit, you know, should I put a hat on because I'm gray and my right finger hair wrinkled? And should I do, you know, and then the music becomes it. Then when I play, there's, there's like, hey, I'm a hustler. I'm hustling you, you know. And I just, I, I'd rather be a so cold man. Yeah, I so you just walk it. the walk and talk the talk. That's it. It's just let the music speak for itself. And, yeah, uh, I just, I'd rather, I'd rather go after, you know, be a construction worker or a pool cleaner or a, it's cooler to be a coal miner or a, you know blue collar worker that's why on my instagram and my facebook it says blue collar musician that's what i want to be now i don't want to be a rock star i don't want to go up against adam levine and justin bieber and try to be a cute <laughs> boy you know i'm i'm a, a 55 year old well 54 i'm gonna be 55 july 10th that's what i want to be a 55 year old man who did what they're doing in the 90s in terms of like you know this and girls and being young and having dark hair and all that stuff so i i i uh i don't want to do that i don't want to go up against those guys i want to go up against willie nelson and Wailing jennings and neil young and jerry garcia you know you talked about having the blues and the guitar and that sound you know, you came off in your style as a blues man. You had that, uh, what do I say? I get this from like a Tom and Jerry, like that zoot suit kind of vibe and look. You know, what, what brought that inspiration to you? Were you going for that, that image when you were starting off in your career as a bluesman, just a little hipper well, to, to that the, the, extent? The, just like when I was playing that song that I wrote just now for you guys, it w it, that was the blues. It was the feeling. The blues is just, the, there's, as an artist, I look at things in five. Okay, there's a lot of people, you know, the God and devil, right and wrong. I look that there's one 
ultimate authority, a creative intelligence, a God, the whole, the Holy Spirit, the mojo. Okay. Um, and there's five colors in art. There's black, blue, red, yellow, white. Red is the the center, the color of blood, the longest finger. And then there's the blue, and then there's black. It's you know strong, thick, you know. So I look at things in five, and then there's a sixth sense, which is the Holy Spirit. And so I paint and play music with those five colors. What? when I express myself and then I mix if I'm jealous about something I'll mix blue with yellow to get a green sound but also jealousy inspired I'm inspired I want to kill him or I'm inspired I want to do that and you can go positive and, and go I want to do that and get up and move because you're inspired or you can be jealous and go I want them dead I'm jealous I can't believe they're doing that it hurts me that I'm not doing that you know or you can say, I love that. That's so rad that they're doing that. I want to do it too. And then you go and do it, you know? And so the color of green is like all plants and all green living stuff, you know, and it, it grows and it, it's inspired. It's, it, it, it's inspiration. So, or it can be jealousy. So, so, and so I look at, I don't look at black as the devil and white, as, you know, which, so if the pinky's white, it's like a dove and frail. And yellow's like the ring finger, you know, married, and, you know, everything's going to be all right, Bob Marley. Then red is like in the middle of it all. It's, it, it has uh, elements of both yellow and um, white and blue and black. And then the blue finger, you know, uh, the blues. And then black is rape, murder, lying, you know. Uh, I've never heard an artist, except for one artist, a really good artist, an amazing artist describe describe music with colors and emotion and i go back to a documentary i seen with the late Jimi hendrix talking about he sees music in colors and these and these emotions and this attachment so it's really inspirational to hear you mentioned these emotions and these colors and the interaction and the blending it's to me it's refreshing to hear an artist talk about this process and talk about this process with you uh, with us you know again this is the whole point is to get this information out and hopefully inspire somebody that's going through some rough shit right now you know and i hate to say it just like that but we all are for, you know have our little battles but it's it's inspirational to hear you talk about all this content and and, and how to get it out i mean I'm, I'm thinking in my head just what, what you already said about the devil and the Lord. And, you know, yeah. I, it reminds me back to the first song I heard with Point of Empire, Sadness. I, I have to say it. Is there ever a chance of getting the band back together to do something? You know, is there any a chance of Porno for Pyros ever? You know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I have 13 songs written that I'd love to get recorded with Perry and Steven and Watt and, and uh, Martin or whoever wants to do it. But um, every time Perry, you know, Perry's had his solo things he's wanted to do, like Satellite Party, so I helped him with that. And then his latest thing, uh, Kind Heaven, so I, I, you know, there was nine songs on that. I played on six of the nine songs. They're his songs, him and Etty and whoever he co-wrote with. And I went in and as a session player and I played and stuff like that. And, and uh, but the stuff we wrote together, made together, is uh, some heavy, honest stuff. And if if they were, if they're willing, if Perry, Stephen, and Martin, or or Watt, or whoever, TJ, whoever we work with, are willing to go, I'm here. I'm ready to go. I'm working. Yeah. You know, uh, so uh, we got together, me, Stephen, and Perry and with Watt and we went and recorded some stuff we did some basic tracks and they were they were, they were good they were fantastic and then Perry started thinking and doing creative stuff over it and then Steve was like no I wanted to be more rock and roll and then I wanted to do the lifestyle thing so we rented this house in Santa Monica that had a studio and a pool and stuff so I brought like sugar babies over was jumping in the pool and having sex in the master bedroom doing all this crazy stuff to to, to have something to project, you know, to porn for pyros. And then I got kicked out of the studio for doing that because it was an elegant, classy studio for rich people. And, <laughs> and then I, they, they had to go into my garage and track tracks and send it to them while they were there. It just fell apart. And 
that's where my head is at. Is if we're gonna do, you know, songs like whiskey rock and roller, then you gotta drink whiskey. You know, I got a hundred women or more, and there's no place I call home. The only time I'm satisfied is when I'm on the road. If you're not banging a hundred girls and going all over the place and drinking whiskey, you're not going to write a song like "Whiskey Rock and Roller" from Leonard Skin. You know, you're, you're it's going to be a fake version of it. You know, yeah. And I just don't want to do fake music. So, the songs that we wrote were at the time a lifestyle that we were living. So I jumped right back into that lifestyle minus the heroin and crack. And uh, and I got kicked out of the studio the first day doing that. And people, I got judged and, you know, it fell apart. Drugs and drink anymore doesn't mean I don't, I'm not around drugs and drinking. And people want, you know, if a girl wants to snort a line of coke while I'm banging her from behind, fair enough, you know. I'm cool with that. I, it's part of, uh, you know, I'm not a good guy. I just, uh, I'm an honest guy. I'm an honest guy. And so I go where I deserve because I'm honest and uh, I'm not a coward. Um, I'm married with children and I'm in an open relationship. I can do what I want. My in-laws know, my mom knows, my brothers and sisters know, and that's all that matters. All that gets in the way and it's hard to do porno for paros again if that makes sense, because of the way I'm living. I just firmly believe that the world needs more honest people. And I think, you know, <laughs> it, it's just a combination of, you know, may, maybe it's everything that you've been through to get to this point, but it's just yes. that, it's <laughs> that pure, pure unadulterated honesty. Hey, this is who I am, like it or not. And yeah. if you do, awesome. Because if you, if you like it, we're family and we're going to have yeah. a great time. If not, F off, who cares? Amen. When it came to shows when it came to gigging what is that one show that you can go back to right now in your head and go holy shit that that was coming out on stage to the masses i don't know if it was Lollapalooza or whatever that was that moment where i had to sit back and just pinch myself going i did it i did it my guitar sound everything that i've been doing got me here what was that that one moment for you it was for in a band called k38 um and we played Lincoln Junior High School in Santa Monica, the auditorium. And Vito DiGiorgio, a family friend of ours, he passed away um, last year, God bless his soul. But he made a video of it, brought in these trucks and filmed it. And we had, you know, people, all these people from Santa Monica come in there and I played on there. And that was it. I mean, it never got any better than that. I just kept chasing it. And and then, you know, the Video Game Awards, the 2018 Video Game Awards, going into 2019, it was in, July, it was in December of 2018 for uh, 28 million live stream viewers. My kids were really, really proud of dad playing with the orchestra and playing uh, Smash Brothers theme and all the themes that, of the songs that got nominated and being the guitar player for that and uh that was a great gig and then of course uh headlining all the major festivals with uh Porno for Paros and then Lance Armstrong oh god when we did uh all the Lollapaloozas around the world um with uh when Lord was playing uh that that era and, and uh Soundgarden and uh um, I think it was 2017 or 16, um, or maybe 17. I don't know. But uh, the, all the Lance Armstrong stuff when we played, uh, when we headlined the Reggae Fest in Austin, when we uh, Lance Armstrong, oh man, when we played Low Palooza in Chile, they went crazy, and uh, and I had Mark Geiger and uh, Charlie Walker. Charlie Walker is. Uh, uh, the CEO of uh, C3 that owns the festivals and then Mark Geiger is uh, he's head of music and co-owner of uh, William Morris and they were both on the stage backing me and watching me and there was a huge crowd going crazy and that felt great and then when we played Austin City Limits um, to the biggest crowd it was incredible and there's 
photos of me on my Instagram where I have my, my hand up and they're all cheering. And that was a great moment. Um, there's been lots of them. And then, you know, playing bars. Uh, when I played my last gig at in Santa Monica for maybe 15 people, and then the very next day, they closed all restaurants, bars, and everything. I played the very last day you could go out to a bar. I know we're the pressed very- on time, and I, I, I want to... Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Two more. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm watching, and Corey and I are going back and forth, and we're like, Sorry, God, we'd, love, we'd love to have you back on again, but i got to ask these two questions because I won't sleep yeah. well at night if I don't ask okay. it. You know, I, I feel, and again, my opinion... The way you've embraced the guitar, I've seen your act where you, you incorporate a violin bow. Do you feel that you draw inspiration? And, and to me, I, I feel like you are the modern version of like a Jimmy Page. And you know, what, what acts do you feel that you've drawn as far as guitar's inspiration from? Yeah, Jimmy Page, the most, for the most versatile guitar player. Andrew Segovia for the finger picking uh, classical stuff. Um, Randy Rhodes for the speed metal stuff. Eddie Van Halen for just everything. Eddie Van Halen was huge to me. Yeah. Um, uh, Peter Frampton is a guitar player, singer. Jimi Hendrix is a guitar player, singer, feedback, vibe, mm-hmm. mojo, living, everything. Jimi Hendrix. Um, there's so many I don't want to miss, you know. Uh, but uh, I loved Eric Clapton. Um, uh, for the blues kind of thing. I love the Beatles. God, um, there's so many, um, the beach boys, Elvis Presley, Elvis was huge on me. Um, just the whole bad boy yeah. jailhouse rock just destroyed me. If you really listen to that and the tone of his voice I saw this, this LA hipster, it looked like he had a Latin fusion blues from the s- late 40s 50s kind of vibe and now i'm yeah. like oh, oh my oh, god yeah. that's that's a little bit of elvis there that's a little bit of this this and this and that style i'm like he's distinct he's i like that you know and i like his vibe and that's why i was kind of curious we're, we're winding down i have to i have to if i don't if i don't do this because okay. i'd love to have you back on board oh, but if boy. i don't ask this one minor request i would love to hear a little bit the beginning of bad shit is that a possibility of course Got some bad shit in a walk of each and every day. God bless. Is that good? Oh, oh God. Lord. I, I yeah. got to say thank you. I would love to have you back on board because I feel like we're just tapping into it. I know we're pressed for time. Is there anything that you'd like to say to keep everybody inspired, keep everybody together? Live and let live and stop judging others and you won't be judged. You'll be judged on how you judge others and let you know the left do what the left do, let the right do what the right do, let the center do what the center and you just live in it all and have peace. Be honest. Uh, uh, Peter, I just want to thank, thank, uh, thank you for everything, man. This is, I got, I do have a ton of questions. I'd love to have you back, you know, but man, I, I loved the whole honesty conversation that was just ticking so many things for me. And I think, you know, people can listen to your story and, you know, be inspired. I can't wait You're to have welcome, you back. Corey. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you, Brian. And uh, looking forward to the next one. Peter, I'd love to get you back in the mix because honestly, like you just, uplifting you know my mindset going into this had a rough week and also i'm like all that bullshit's gone you know so thank you again for making the time and coming out and, and again love to hear some some your music and everything you've been doing has been just great and a blessing so thank you thank again you for your time much. okay peace yeah, thank, thank you, Peter. you.